Why hello there, mighty, magical, and mysterious adventurers alike. Shams Nelson here from Fantastic Anatomy, and today I have a slightly different video for y'all. I'm going to be talking about my experiences at the CTNX Animation Convention, that's the Creative Talent Network Convention, and uh, the reason I'm not doing a drawing video this week is because I'm working on this comic with a good friend of mine over at Cowabunga Forever, Jordan, and... Um, yeah, I've been spending all my drawing time doing that. So, but I was reflecting on my experiences at CTNX and um, I learned a lot and I thought I'd share those experiences with you. And they should help you if you're planning to go to uh, any expos, uh, like art expos to kind of like further your career or also to just help your art and your uh, design thinking. So yeah, let's get started. What I did here was, this is the, um, Basically, I found out about CTNX uh, just kind of randomly, and it was about a month before the convention was uh, set to take place. So I just signed up for it. The tickets cost like 300 bucks, but you can get them for a lot cheaper, and I'll talk about that at the end of the video. And um, and yeah, so so I so I just was like, okay, I got to put together a portfolio of like artwork because I really didn't have any finished stuff and so I just did what I could and I put this together and this is what I brought to the expo and the first thing is I put it in this that came in this plastic thing and I liked it because it kept it clean and like protected in my bag but like when I was bringing this out to take out to people and then just like slipping it out of this plastic case sometimes I had to ask them to do it or hold my stuff because I need two hands like it it wasn't an elegant experience so first off just don't 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 do that. <laughs> it's okay if it gets roughed up a little. It's not an ancient manuscript that's like, uh, you know, needs to be preserved. So I think uh, a lot of people were kind of handling it very carefully, like like delicately turning the pages and such. But, um, but no, I think it would be more comfortable. It's like, hey, here you go, just write out like this. I think the professional, you know, binding and everything is nice and the thicker pages, that's good. But uh, I think I went a little too far with that plastic thing. All right, so I made what I call this conceptual art document. And I got this idea because I was telling a friend of mine um, that I wanted to be in concept art. And then like 15 minutes later, she was like, wait, did you say you wanted to, to uh, work in conceptual art? And I was like, conceptual art? That sounds so much cooler. And I guess it's, it means the same thing. And I was like, is this gonna be pretentious if I put it there? But I don't know, I want it to be a little different or just, I liked it, so I just did it. Um, but it's confusing. This is the first, this is the other the second tip I'll give you guys, man. Figure out what your portfolio is about and what it's like, what you're trying to convey. Like, this is what I do or this is what I'm trying to tell you and make that obvious. This was like, okay, Project Red, most ambiguous title ever. I just was working on this other project called Project Lightning and I thought the name was cool and the main character is named Red. So, um, so yeah, I just called it Project Red. Doesn't tell you anything about what the heck this is. Conceptual art document. Pretty vague. Okay, my name. Great. <laughs> um, another thing is, I got a lot of people saying you gotta put your best piece of art on the front. Like, or just the first page has to be art. Like, look at what I did. One, the first page, second page. Here's a concept of a story. So I'm handing this to them. So imagine this. You're some professional artist, right? And this guy comes up to you and he's like, hey, what's up? Like, uh, hey, can you check out my portfolio and just give me some feedback? I'm trying to, you know, become an artist like you. And he's like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, sure. I'll look at this stuff. And, and so you hand, so he gets this and he's like, all right, well, okay. This doesn't look like a portfolio, really. It says conceptual art document. All right, what is a story, you know? <laughs> like, for, and also, by the way, no one, I think one person out of like, I think I probably showed it to about 15 people. I think like one person actually like skimmed through this. No one read it fully. And um, yeah, they don't care. This is, it's an art convention. They're, they're there to look at art. They're busy, you know, and it's like, no one's gonna just read this and be like, I wanna fund your game. Like, I mean, maybe that could happen, but that's not realistic thinking. So I wouldn't uh, plan for that unless you have a really well-developed idea and stuff. So, um, so yeah, I won't go into what the concept was. Um, so the first page here, I got some art. Okay, great. The protagonist of the story and stuff. And I guess I should zoom in a little bit. Um, there's this thing. I, I had on all these, like, these, uh, 
these interesting, well, I thought they were interesting, little just like tidbits of writing. Uh, here's like lighthearted and a zeal for adventure. Um, doo -doo -doo. And then Spike says, reluctant yet loyal servant. But I, okay, no one read that. So basically no one's gonna read anything from my experience with this one expo, and it makes sense, because it is an art expo, and like, what do you want from me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't read your novel right now. <laughs> I get where they're coming from. Um, yeah, don't worry about writing stuff, just show them art. And, uh, yeah, and like main characters, like, I just wanted the graphic designing to look cool, so, uh, so I designed it, it's like so, so redundant, it's unnecessary, this could have been better just as a full page picture. Um, unless I'm trying to pitch my work as a graphic designer or like a UE, U, UI, user interface designer for like mobile gaming platforms and stuff. Um, then like, okay, I want to show that I can do graphic design, but I should show more like buttons and stuff like stuff that they could use in the game. Um, yeah, so here, here, so the one thing I did is, okay, initial villain design, this Grim Reaper, tried out different colors, I want to show them that I know how to do that. Uh, and then here I had a sketch and then what the final piece kind of looked like. This piece actually got a lot more attention um, than most of the other pieces in my portfolio. And it's funny because it's kind of my least favorite. Um, I thought it came out too dark, especially in the print. But one of the things I liked about it was contrast. There is a really strong contrast between this glowing and this dark part. And you could see that in like a game or something like that really sticking out. Um, uh, as like a cool effect or something like that and um, the other thing they pointed out is they liked how I was kind of getting a shape going on here so um, and this is this is one of the big tips that I got from a lot of people is to push your shapes to like like you, you they, they were like you're getting there but you got to push these shapes kind of thing and I'll give you an example of what I mean I'll draw a little something here to show you and this might be something you even want to include in the in the concept art document or what am I talking about in your portfolio or whatever because um, cause yeah when I there's this page at the end where I put some of my preliminary sketches and it just shows some of the like uh, you know just some of like the earlier work on these characters but um, they, they, I got good feedback on this. They were like, yeah, we like to see this stuff, or people like to see this stuff. But, okay, one of the other things is, I know I'm jumping around a lot, and I'm kind of just going with what's on my mind. The other thing is, the people there are working professionals. They're not, like, especially on the, on the grounds, they're not, um... They're not hiring, they're not producers, they're not like CEOs of companies and stuff. They're the artists too. So they'll like look at your work and give you feedback from an artist's perspective. But, um, and it's cool, they like to see the, 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 I mean I like to see an artist's process and I think other artists do too. But like, on the grounds, like, and what I mean on the grounds is on the, on the show floor where all the booths are and stuff, which is where I was showing people. You know, like, people aren't looking to hire, you know, so I, I kind of went in there maybe kind of hoping or expecting that, but that's not the case. It's just other artists, and it's a great place to get feedback and make feedback and make connections and stuff, but, like, not necessarily just to go in there and say, okay, I'm going to get a job uh, by showing these guys. But there is a part of CTNX that I was too late to sign up for. You have to submit your portfolios like a, mo a couple months in advance or something and then like Blizzard and other big companies select the portfolios that they liked and then you do an in-person interview like behind the scenes as part of the um, as part of the CTNX experience and I think that costs a little extra or something. I'm not sure about that. But um, but the point is I missed that. So if you want to get hired and stuff, that's where you need to go. And to do that, you need probably a pretty, pretty darn good portfolio. I don't think this would have cut it. I mean, like, obviously, I, I know I have a lot of work. That's one of the main things that going to this expo taught me. And this is probably one of the main things that, like, reasons I would... Uh, really encourage people to go to whatever art expos in their area is because you see these people's work and you're like you know where you stand like you can't deny like okay I can't do that stuff right now or my people don't look my uh, figures don't look as anatomically correct as these guys they just don't you know but like you also see that they're real people so and that they're not like you know like superhuman either they're they, they're good at certain things they're not as good at certain things they've practiced a lot and when you see like uh, some of the artists doing demos and you can really like CTNX was cool because it's in a smaller venue and like when they do demos it's literally just like a guy sitting at a table oops 
oh man, whatever. Um, I got a little mark there. It's a little guy sitting at a table, like doing his drawing, and then um, you can like, like you can just like lean over if you want and like watch him, you know, like look up close and kind of like I was almost standing looking over their shoulders at some point. Uh, so that was cool, and it made me it like humanize the process. I'm like, oh, I see how they went from start to finish. Well, when I just see the finished piece, I'm like, dang, that looks like it. It'll be really hard to do, you know. When I see the whole process, I'm like, okay, I can see that he has more skills and experience than me, but like, it's doable. It's not like my his hands are more magical than mine. In her, in you know, he wasn't born with you know whatever. Anyways, I think you guys get the point. Let's move on. So, um, oh yeah, so I was gonna do a little drawing. So what I think I didn't understand what they meant by like pushing shapes enough that much at the time. What I think. But I've been thinking about it more, and it's like, this guy's got a good triangular kind of shape. Or it could even be a teardrop shape. See, that's the thing. Or a diamond. Those are the things you can experiment with. So here, is it like, is this his basic form? You know? Can you guys see that? Or uh, is it more like a, like that, with his head sticking in there? Or is it a diamond? Maybe his head's just that top part. And then really kind of translating that to the shape. So it's like almost getting there. Like it's almost a diamond. It's almost a triangle. But it loses it. it I, I lost it. Or it could even be like a cross shape maybe. Like he could be more like, you know, two squares. There's a lot of ways I could have pushed that shape idea. And, um... But it's kind of like in the middle. It's like, it's like, it doesn't have as much character as it could. I think that's the main thing. When you push those shapes, you like push the character into a certain direction. You have to make a decision. Design, design, a design, a design decision. I don't know what happened there. Cool. So, well, decision. You got to make a design decision when you uh, bust out, when you're working on like really solidifying a shape and uh, really kind of like sticking to that and it'll give him character. And what does the shape say about his character? Teardrop shape is a lot less intimidating than a triangle shape with sharp points, you know? That kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, shape's a big thing. And that's one of the things I heard from a lot of people. Here again, what's the shape on this guy? Is he a, uh, is he a, like a cylinder tube? You know, or is he blockier? Is this a block shape or is this a pyramid shape, you know? I'm kind of like in between all these things and I didn't realize it at the time but I think that's what they were saying and um, and it's true, like I can see how the shapes can be pushed. That's what they say, push the shapes, push the shapes. That's what I kept hearing. All right, so we got some uh, Skorks and Dorks, Skeletal Orcs and Death Orcs. Um, I don't know, people just kind of flipping through these pages. They thought this was pretty cute. I think there were some, uh, like, Pokemon fans out there and stuff like these. This page a little more. Even those more of the simple stuff. Right. It was interesting because this is, this is another page that got a little more, like, a couple of people were like, oh, that's a cool design and stuff. And there was actually one of my less favorite pages. And so what I've come to realize, I think, is that, oh, like, design trumps like finished aesthetic. If it's got a cool idea that's more interesting to people than seeing like a really generic but like cute or well painted or whatever thing. And this is what I hear also from podcasts and things I watch. Especially if you want to become a designer like a concept artist or something. It's all about you gotta gotta be able to design stuff. It's and drawing is also important but I mean definitely but uh but let's say let's say you could either let's say you're either really good at designing or really good at drawing. So like you can draw things amazingly, but it's all really generic stuff. Why would a company that needs new ideas, they're hiring you for your ideas and the fact that, and how are you going to convey those ideas? You convey them by, through your art, because that's the most clear way to, to show something that's in your imagination to someone else. It's much more clear than words. A picture is worth a thousand words. Um, a lot more, maybe. Uh, anyways, so the point is, um, they're hiring you for your ideas. If you are have like terrible drawing skills, like you can only draw like a little stick figure, but like with your stick figure, you can tell them like, oh, like this is a crazy, you know, it's got tentacles and it's angry. I mean, this is not a cool, cool design. Like let's say, all right, and it's a robot, like a robot Medusa. All right, let's say you can just. I don't know, man. This is terrible. But well, hopefully you can draw a little better than that. But let's say you draw the robot Medusa, 
uh, what's like, let's give her like a cool, like dart, I don't know, this is terrible. But the point is like, you can get the idea across with a really simple drawing. Um, and that's like, but if the idea is good, that's more worth more than a great drawing. But anyways, you need both. So, uh, so that's what, but one thing I realized is my, I didn't have that like exciting ideas. You know, this was a mashup basically between, this is like just a standard little devil guy. He could fit anywhere, you know? Like, what idea have I contributed? What is new here that people haven't seen before? Nothing. He's just kind of cute, cute and cool. If I wanted to be like an illustrator or something like that, then sure, this is, I just want to show finished work. But, um, but yeah. Oh, and also I put this logo everywhere and I heard, no one said anything about it. I think one person said the logo looks cool. But, uh, but the, the another podcast was saying like, don't put your logo on every page, man. What's the point? Just put it in one place and that's it, you know? Uh, it's not like impressive or cool that you have, you know, you have a logo. Anyone can do that these days with Photoshop. So it doesn't really mean much. Um, unless it's on a billboard or something, I guess. So, um, and so this was my idea. Like, okay, yeah, you can just have one, uh, one character, one what's the thing model and then you change the skins on it if it's like a video game you just change the outside color so uh, a couple people picked up on that and they thought that was a, you know good good show to show because it saves time for the developers of the game to not have to make a million models for everything if this was to be a game and then these were random ones like i like this guy core of the bear clan uh the cronians me and my friend work and then bulba sword special guest star one person really liked that. <laughs> but it's just random. I don't know. See, I didn't know what I was doing. And then I was like, oh, yeah, here, let me show that I can do environments. And so this is my one environment page. And it's like, if someone needed someone who could do environments, they need more than one example. Oh, you know, like, I need, like, at least three or four different environments showing that I can do it rather than just one. But anyways, I was just coming to see what kind of reactions I would get and feedback and, um... No, it was fun. I had a lot of fun making this and going to the expo. And I wasn't expecting, I didn't have like high hopes or anything like that. But, um, there's the last page with a little subtle logo and, uh, and this, and this dwarf guy. So yeah, so CTNX. It was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> um, if you get your tickets early, I think I bought mine already for next year and it's like $99 and then you can return it if you need to. Um, like, I think you have, like, up to 60 days. You have to do it before 60 days before the event or before 30 days before the event. So um, so I could still cancel now and get all my money back. But it saved me $200 off the regular ticket price that I got a month before. And uh, it, was a good, it, it was a good expo. I didn't get into as many panels as I wanted. Um, very crowded. Everyone wanted to get into panels. One panel, I literally stood in line for, like, two and a half or three hours to, and... I didn't get in. I was one of the first people not to get in. Like, the line got cut off right before me. And here are my uh, fast passes, which are like the slowest fast pass. I didn't even use three of my fast passes. And I paid for an extra level to get these. They were just that useless. Um, so, but they changed that. Next year, they're not having fast passes. I don't know what they're going to do. But um, I think they, 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 they explained it. And it did sound like it was going to be better. It basically, like, eliminated the long wait times for a lot of them like like you could you could not wait and get into like at least three you just have to show up 10 minutes in advance and sign up in advance or something like that um but anyways you can check that out on their website but i wanted to mention that because that was the one bummer part of the experience uh not getting into as many panels as i wanted to panels i did get into were pretty cool one of them was like super crowded in a little conference room and i actually sat on the floor <laughs> but like whatever you know i learned some cool stuff and um yeah so i think that kind of sums up my experience with ctnx and i would definitely recommend you guys go check out whatever animation expo or, or uh, drawing art expo is in your area. You're gonna meet some cool artists. You're gonna see that they're human just like you and hopefully be inspired to reach their level of competence in your art. So um, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, have a great day. Peace, God bless, and stay fantastic everyone.